Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from Math Mountain Engineering. We're going to be doing a video for you on the slope deflection method. You know, a third year concept uh, dealing with indeterminate beams. And uh, it's an, actually a very interesting concept. So this is going to be a pretty introductory video. It's going to be our first. And it's going to give you an idea of how to kind of do things the long way. And then uh, in another video, we're going to introduce to you a nice little trick uh, called the where you use the modified slope deflection equations. For this one, we're just going to do the regular ones. And um, as you'll see here, actually the first step in any slope deflection method question is to find the fixed end moments, but we uh, we did that in a previous video actually. So if you want to go ahead and figure out how we got these values, the link will be down below in the description and in the comments. So, All right, so let's get started. We're asked to uh, find the support reactions and sh uh, shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram of this beam using the slope defla uh, deflection equations. So first thing to do is to find uh, the number of degrees of freedom on this beam in terms of rotation. And uh, the beam is actually free to rotate at point C only. Actually, these two are restrained. So uh, so we're going to say degree of freedom equals 1, okay, theta C. So that's kind of uh, what we're looking for. That's also going to determine the number of equilibrium equations we have, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so um, after we have found the fixed end moments, okay, and after we've identified our degrees of freedom, what we're going to do is we're going to start to apply the slope deflection equations. Okay, so the slope deflection equations, I'm going to write them out. And uh, you're going to need to apply those to each section of the beam. So section AC and section CE. So that means you're going to have four equations. Let's go ahead and let's uh, begin writing out the first one, which is going to be MAC. Okay, so we have MAC, um, and we're also going to have MCA. Okay? So uh, we're going to... When, when we write MAC, okay, so we, we go from section to section, from support to support, and whichever... Um, subscript letter we use first, so MA in this case, we're going to consider this the moment at A. So this would be considered the moment at C. Okay, so uh, we have the moment at A, okay, is equal to, and this is just a formula, so you don't really need to rem remember this, so we have 2 EI over L times uh, 2 theta A. Okay, so um, wherever we are evaluating the moment at, so remember I said MA, so we're at A, and we're looking at the moment at A, we're going to put a 2 in front of the rotation at that point. So we have 2 theta a, okay, plus theta c, so the theta at the uh, the opposite end, um, where the second subscript is, minus 3 psi. That's just a Greek letter there. That actually refers to a settlement um, value, but we're not doing settlement now, so we're going to ignore that for now. I'll, bring, I'll do that in another video, so come back for that. And we're going to add the fixed end moment, okay, of a c. So whatever uh, the subscript is here, just add it to the fem. And we did that in the other question, so we have that value there. Let's go to CA, so we're at C, okay? 2EI over L doesn't change, okay? And uh, as we said before, when we're at the point in which we're evaluating the moment, so whatever the first subscript is, okay, that is where the 2 goes in front of the theta. So this is just going to be theta A, okay? Plus 2 theta C minus 3 psi plus FEM CA. Let's go over this, and uh, maybe we can cancel a couple things. So we do know that the rotation at A is 0, okay, because it's a fixed support. We don't have any settlement, so we, this always cancels when there's no settlement. And um, let's go down to CA. Same thing here. We don't have a rotation at A, and we don't have any settlement. So these are going formulas are going to reduce to MAC. And if we divide 2 by L, so if we plug in L here, that's 30, right, 20 plus 10. So we're going to have 0 0.0667 EI. Okay, times theta C plus FEMAC, which is 40. Cool, so that's the first slope deflection equation finished. Pretty simple, right? All right, let's go on to MCA. Okay, so we have MCA, okay, and um, so now we have 2 times 2 here, okay, so let's uh, not forget that. So that's going to be 4 divided by 30, so that's 0 0.133 EI, okay, and that's going to be times theta C. And the FEM at CA is minus 80. Okay, so that's our second slope deflection equation complete. Cool. So we're we're almost there. We're we're on our way. Let's uh, apply the slope uh, deflection equations to CE now. Okay, so we have MCE. Okay, that's going to be equal to. So we're at C, right? So we have 2EI over L. All right, that's going to be times 2 theta C plus theta E minus 3 psi plus FE. M C E. Now let's do it. the same thing for E C. So we have 2 E I over L. Okay, we're going to do 2 theta E plus theta C minus 3 psi plus F E M E C. Okay, and if we go here and simplify that, we're going to simply have 
MCE equals. And uh, let's uh, take a look here. We can zero the E rotations because we know that there's no rotation at point E because it's fixed. Cool. And if we plug this in, so we're going to have the same coefficient here as we did here because we have 2 times 2 divided by 30. Okay, so we're going to have MCE is equal to 0.133 okay, EI theta C plus, and let's plug in FEMCE, so 37.5. And MEC okay, is going to be equal to 0.0667 EI theta C minus 37.5. Okay, cool. So right, what we've done here is we've der derived the uh, slope deflection equations. And uh, what we do need now is we need to relate these in some way in order to solve them. And because um, we have a system of equations here. And how we're going to go about doing that okay, is we're going to establish what we call um, equilibrium equations. So equilibrium equations are, uh, are a point on the beam here where we can make some sort of relation between the moments here. So if you take a look at C, okay, we know that the summation of the moments at a roller support are equal to zero. Okay? And um, the number of equilibrium equations we need are the number of degrees of freedom that we have. Okay? So uh, in this case here, we have the moment uh, CA, right? because this moment was when we were at C, and this moment with the subscript where C is first is uh, where, where we're also at C, so we're on the right side of C. So we need to add those two together in order to create an equation where we can, we can use to solve, this, uh, solve the unknowns here. So we have MCA plus MCE equals zero. Okay? So that's our equation of equilibrium. And we can use that equation now in, in order to uh, solve the system here. So if we go ahead and we plug in MCA and MCE into this equation, okay, we're going to get, so we're just plugging in MCA, which was 0 0.133 EI theta C minus 80. Okay, and we are going to just move CE. Okay, so we have that. So that's going to be plus MCE. MCE was 0 0.133 EI theta C plus 37.5, and that's equal to zero. And now you'll see, actually, we're not given the value of EI in this problem, okay? But we, what we can do is we can solve for this term here. So this whole term, EI theta C, is unknown. So let's go ahead, we can rearrange, and we, can, um, we have like terms here, and we have uh, constants here. So let's just go ahead and add those, and add these two terms together, and you'll get the value 0 0.267 EI theta C, minus 42.5 equals zero, okay? And now if we just move 42.5 to the other side of the equation and divide by 0.267, we get EI theta C is simply 159.2 kip feet squared, all right? And what can we do with this value? Well, if we go back to our equations, okay? So if we go back here to our, uh, our moment equations, as you can see, the only unknown here uh, on the right side is EI theta C. And if we plug in the numerical value for EI theta C in these equations, okay, we are going to get the values of the moments. And those are the end moments, and we can go ahead and we can solve the beam using those. And that's the idea behind the slope deflection method. Okay, So go ahead, um, you know, you can go back in the video, find those moment equations again, and try and plug them in. I'm going to give you the values here. Okay, So what we did is we were just plugging in EI theta C 159.2 in for these values here, okay? Perfect, okay, so here we have the member end moments, all right? And if we go ahead and we just start to uh, draw these out, okay? Okay, this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, so we have our AC, okay, so if you remember this was AC C, E, okay? So we're going to have what looks like, okay, we have a 50.6 kip foot moment, okay? We have a negative because it's counterclockwise. We have 58.8 kip foot, okay? This uh, moment here is going to be C, E, that's 58.8. And as you'll see here, right, these, the moments here are equal and opposite, which they must be because it's a roller. And we have 26.9 kip feet here. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty much it for this part of the video. We'll do uh, part two where we draw the bending moment and the shear force diagram. We find the reactions using the moments that we found with the slope deflection method. Thank you so much for watching this, and like and subscribe.